On the early morning of June 13, 1977, while a young woman working as a camp counselor was on her way to the showers, she noticed objects under a nearby tree and thinking it might have been luggage from the Girl Scouts, she went to check it out and that's when she saw the dead body of 10-year-old Doris Milner. She immediately began screaming and ran back to the cabin where the other camp counselors were at and alerted them to quickly count the girls. After arriving to tent 8, they realized that the tent was empty and that it was covered in blood. They called the police and after evacuating all 150 Girl Scouts, the police found the other two bodies of 8-year-old Lori Farmer and 9-year-old Michelle Gousset. But could the camp have prevented this? Today we're going to talk about what happened that night in 1977. Lori Farmer, age 8, the youngest of the group, was known as a lovely girl who not only was extremely smart, but also very mature for her young age. She had even skipped a grade and was ahead of her entire grade. This was her first time at Camp Scott and she was very excited. Her birthday was also that weekend. Michelle Gouzet, age 9, was a very nice little girl who loved nature. She kept plants back at home and before leaving she made her mom promise to take care of her plants until she came back. Her favorite kind were African violets. This was actually Michelle's second time coming to Camp Scott and was extremely excited. The oldest of the three, as well as the only African American girl at the camp, was 10 year old Doris Milner. Doris was known as a very shy and anxious girl. She was actually not excited to leave for camp as she didn't want to separate from her parents. She was finally convinced, and along with the 130 other girls, she hopped on the bus on the afternoon of June 12, 1977, to head to camp for the week. Camp Scott had been open since 1928 and was located near Locust Grove, Oklahoma. Once arriving, the girls were assigned to the area of the woods as well as their tents. Lori, Michelle, Doris, and another young girl whose identity I could not find were supposed to be staying at tent number 8. This was the furthest tent from the counselor cabin as well as the one deepest in the woods. After spending the afternoon together and having dinner, the counselors noticed that a storm was approaching and decided to send the girls to bed earlier than usual at around 8 p.m. The next morning at around 6 a.m., one of the counselors found Doris's body and alerted the rest. They called the police and once arriving, they immediately put the camp on lockdown. Parents began arriving, worrying and praying that their daughters were okay. Once the other two bodies were found, at around 10 a.m., the entire camp was evacuated so police could begin the investigation. Lori and Michelle were found wrapped in sheets and they had been bludgeoned to death. Michelle had signs of sexual abuse in both areas of her body. Lori, however, had none. Both of the girls were killed while they slept in their tent. Dora seemed to have been singled out. She was not covered and was found naked from the waist down with her legs open. She had been brutally raped and beaten, yet her cause of death was strangulation. She was also not killed in the cabin like the other two girls. She was killed in the woods. Her hands were taped behind her back, yet Michelle and Lori's hands were tied with ropes. Near the bodies, they found tape, leftover rope, and the big flashlight, with newspaper inside the battery compartment, most likely used to tie in the batteries. According to the autopsy, the time of death were between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. They found a boot print in the tent floor and a fingerprint on the flashlight. A match for both of these has never been found. Due to the ways the girls were tied and the way things were arranged differently, it is believed that there were at least two killers involved. The police found it strange that there were many other girls that could have been murdered, yet the killers went straight for these three girls, or more specifically, Doris. 
As for the fourth young girl that was supposed to stay in that tent that night, it turns out she was reassigned to a different tent last minute. Days went by with no answer until some hunters found an abandoned cave with a message inside. The message engraved into the wall stated, The killer was here, bye bye fools, along with date. Inside the cave, they also found the rest of the newspaper found inside the flashlight by the girl's body. There was also tape and two pictures of unknown women. These pictures were traced back to 33-year-old Jean Leroy Hart, a Native American from the area who had previously been arrested for the abduction and rape of two pregnant women, as well as burglary charges. He had been sentenced to 300 years and had escaped jail four years before the murders and was currently on the run. After finding him hiding in a friend's house, he was arrested once again. The footprint of the scene did not belong to him as it was too small. The fingerprints also did not seem to be his. The DNA found inside the girls could not be tested as at this time technology was not as advanced as it is now. Jean used as an excuse that he had previously had a vasectomy, therefore the DNA could not belong to him. He died of a heart attack shortly after and during his autopsy it was found that his vasectomy had been a fail and that now it was possible for the DNA to belong to him. Therefore police never found out if it was him. Could this all have been prevented? Two months before the girls arrived at the camp, the counselors found a note in the cabin stating that the person writing the note was planning on murdering three girls from the camp. The counselors believed that this was a prank and disregarded the note. The night of the murders, the counselor that found the bodies said that around 10.30 p.m., two hours after sending the girls to sleep, she heard moans and groans coming from the woods and after shining her flashlight, the noises stopped. Believing that it was an animal, she disregarded the noises. It is currently believed that these noises were coming from Doris being raped or murdered. An older girl from a different area of the camp reported hearing screams coming from the woods at around 1 in the morning and that she woke up another camper but after listening for a while and not hearing another noise, they also disregarded the noises and went back to sleep. Another younger camper also from a different area reported hearing someone yelling mama from the woods but as she was so young, she just got scared and hid under her blanket. As Lori and Michelle were the first ones to be murdered in the tent, it is believed that this was also Dory screaming for her mom. A hair was found on Michelle's body. It was long, wavy, and it was black. This could have belonged to Jean, but it was never confirmed. Till this day, the murders have never been solved, and the camp remains, remains abandoned. abandoned.